I called it. I called it. I called it from the very beginning. I called it. Yo, what's up, everyone? My name is Jet. Welcome back to episode of MDK Racing Victory Stop, recapping the opening round of the 2024 NASCAR playoffs. It was a wild one at Atlanta. We expected that, but uh, we were, I think I was personally surprised by how clean it was. I mean, this race, really, the entirety of this race was dominated by the Fords. I mean, Ford as a whole led about 62 to 63% of the race. They led 166 of 266 laps with Austin Cindric, uh having the most laps led at 92. And I'm pretty sure he led wire to wire, if not majority of stage two. Ryan Blaney won stage one. So Fords were the dominating factor, like what we expected to see at the drafting tracks. But that didn't mean they had some competition. You had Chevy drivers. You had Ross Chassain, Kyle Busch, Daniel Suarez, uh, who was a major factor late in the race. And the Toyota drivers, specifically Ty Gibbs, who I think led around 37 some odd laps, uh, was one of the few Toyota drivers to get up in there with the Ford cam Ford camp. So while it was a major dominated Ford day, they had some help. They had, you know, some other contending drivers around them. But that didn't mean that even though this race was chaotic, not as chaotic as it was in February, this race, you could tell, was building to the end. I mean, stage one, stage two was fairly calm. We had just a small handful of cautions. I think we only had three or four yellows, and none of them involved any major group amount of cars. It was relatively one to three, maybe four car accidents, but it wasn't one like what we saw in February, like on lap two that took out 10, 12 cars. The only big accident was the one on the final lap, but that didn't mean that we didn't have some major moments. The first major crash happened to Kyle Larson, who came into this race as the number one seed, turned to all by himself, just turns left, overcorrects, and slams the outside wall a ton, huge damage, and again, then gets pile driven in the back end by Chase Briscoe. Two uh, playoff drivers out like that, including the big one being Kyle Larson. Larson would end up finishing in 37th. Chase Briscoe would finish dead last in 38th. But that already changed the dynamic completely. The fact that the number one seed was out, basically second to last, earning zero stage points in the process, allowed a huge opportunity for some drivers that were below the cut line to rise up and gain an advantage on the top drivers. There were some interesting pit strategy late in the race because of the threat of fuel coming into play. Uh, in stage three, you saw some new contenders. After the domination of Ford, stage three had a different variety of drivers. Like you had drivers like um, uh, Bubba Wallace and Ty Gibbs who stayed out after a crash involving Jonathan Nemechek. They battled for a little bit. Bubba at one point even took the lead from Ty Gibbs. And even in the closing laps of the stages, you had more uh, Chevy drivers like Kyle Busch and Daniel Suarez, the winner in February, who was a major factor at the end of that race. But again, it being Atlanta, Super Speedway style of racing, when a crash happens, you have to be careful evolving around playoff drivers. And another cr crash happened on lap 206 involving two playoff contenders. Very similar to Kyle Larson. Coming off for turn number two, Chris Buescher just gets loose, hits Ryan Blaney, sends Blaney sideways, slamming into the side of Martin Trick Jr., taking both drivers out in the race. Now, Blaney was able to continue on. However, Truex suffered too much damage and he had to retire from the race. Now, this was extremely critical for the 19 team standpoint because Truex already came into this race below the cut line being at just minus one and him finishing I believe at 35th place exact the exact opposite of what he needed. Blaney on the other hand somehow even with how bent up that race car was I mean shout out to his sponsor Dent Wizard because he had a lot of dents on that machine was still able to somehow finish in the top five. But in the closing laps Kyle Busch, Daniel Suarez and Ty Gibbs were putting on one hell of a battle. And then Akasha came out for debris with a giant Walmart banner that came uh, that came and fell onto the racetrack, sending us to a five lap shootout. This time you had Ty Gibbs on the lead, but on the back stretch, Daniel Suarez gets a great run, jumps to the inside, had the lead for a minute. Gibbs fights back. All of a sudden, they're side by side. Here comes Kyle Busch taking it three wide. You have flashbacks to February. February, like oh my goodness, this is gonna happen again. We're gonna see a three wide finish. And then another caution comes out coming to the white flag when Noah Gregson spins and crashes on the back straightaway, sending us into overtime. That overtime finish 
That overtime saw basically a four-car battle. On the outside, you had Team Trackhouse with Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain. On the inside, you had the Penske drivers of Joey Logano and uh, Ryan Blaney. Now, Suarez, he got a great push, was to the lead on the back straightaway, but in turns three and four, Ross Chastain had to let off the gas. Meanwhile, Blaney was still able to keep up pretty close behind Logano and push Logano to the lead. Suarez tried his best to get back at Logano, but that push that Blaney gave to Logano sealed everything and that would give Joey Logano to win. He would hold off Blaney Suarez and the rest of the pack while they crashed behind him. Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, uh, multiple drivers, Harrison Byrne, multiple drivers were involved in the final lap crash coming to the finish line. But most importantly, Joey Logano goes to victory lane for the second time in 2024 for his 34th career cup series win, his second win at Atlanta, leading, I believe, only six laps. But most importantly, he advances onto the round of 12 and can we flash back to what I said on Friday and what I said earlier today? One seed. I think Joey Logano is going to advance to the round of 12 with a win at Atlanta. He has won at Atlanta in the past, won in March of 2022. And Ford as a whole, they have known to be extremely well on the drafting track. I called it. I called it. I called it. I said that Joey Logano was going to advance on a win at Atlanta. Bam, and he proved me right. Thank you, Logano. Anyways, let's take a look at the unofficial results. So Joe Logano wins. Second place is Daniel Suarez. Third was Ryan Blaney. Fourth, Christopher Bell and Alex Bowen round to the top five. How Blaney finished third in that car, I have no idea, but he managed to. Tyler Reddick, the regular season champion, a quiet day, but importantly, a clean day. Finishes in sixth place. Kyle Busch in seventh. Chase Elliott in eighth. His teammate, William Byron in ninth. And Austin Sindrick, who led the most laps, ends up finishing in tenth place. Justin uh, Daniel Hemrick in eleventh. Justin Haley in twelfth. He had some really strong moments. Even got penalized at one point. Was able to drive back uh, to finish in the top 15. Raj has saying Ricky Sanders Jr. and Corla Joy the top 15. His teammate Co Carson Hosevar in 16th, Gibbs 17th, Ryan Priest, Brad Kozlowski, and Austin Dillon the top 20. A couple other notables, Michael McDowell who had the first 30 laps finishes in 22nd. Denny Hamlin in 24th. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. Uh, Bubba Wallace 29th. Harrison Byrne playoff driver in 31st. And then Martrex Jr. 35th. Busher 36th. Kyle Larson and Chase Briscoe rounds out the 38 car field. Here's a look at the point, the playoff grid, I should say, following Atlanta, one race down, two races to go in the round of 16. Joe Legano, the only one crew at the moment that is breathing safely. One win, he is locked into the round of 12. Ryan Blaney at plus 45, Chris Avella at plus 40, Reddick and Byron tied at plus 33, Bowman and Cindric tied at plus 27, and Chase Celia at 24, Daniel Suarez at plus 22. Kyle Larson loses 20 points due to his second to last place finishes, goes from first to 10th, just 15 points above the cut line. Denny Hamlin, horrible day. Now only two, just two points above the cut line. His teammate Ty Gibbs holds the final spot. One point ahead of Brad Kozlowski. Harrison Byrne minus 16. Martin Drake Jr. minus 19. And Chase Briscoe in last minus 21. Okay, so my thoughts on this race. Like I said, it was more, much more tame. It was still a fun race. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was still very fun, very entertaining. But it was a lot more calm than February. February was just wild. It was like you get the lead for one lap, then the next lap, a new leader. This one much more calm and this was expected at least in my eyes i knew that ford was going to be very difficult to beat and they were i mean blaney won stage one cendrick won almost if not all of every of every lap in stage two i mean the only time you really saw new drivers other than four show up was near the end of stage three like i said ty gibbs daniel suarez kyle bush and so forth but that was late in the race so if i had to give a rating for this race i give it i think an eight out of ten it was good it was a good race um nothing really much to complain about again i like atlanta because it, it's like that mixture of old daytona and talladega where handling still matters uh you know where you make your moves you have to be much you have to think about your moves much more it's not like oh let me just pick a lane and hope it works you have to really be strategic on the moves you make you know i mean we saw it the best drivers like logano like blaney the drivers that we expect to be up front you know they finish one two Daniel Suarez, I was surprised to see how well he ran. I know he won in February, but I was surprised to see him back it up again. But it was really cool to see, and I was definitely rooting for him to win the race. But uh, coming home in third place, uh, 22 points above the cut line is a pretty nice cushion. Uh, but let's talk about some of the drivers. I mean, Denny Hamlin. What the hell happened to that 11 team? I mean, 
you think about what happened a couple weeks ago at Daytona when they had that penalty. And then now, I mean, absolutely horrific. I mean, they qualified dead last and on speed, just on speed, not because of a penalty, whatever. They qualified last on speed, rode in the back the entire day, earned zero stage points, zero nothing, and they end up in a crash. I mean, it was shocking how bad this 11 team was. It was kind of like any time they... The camera had uh, Hamlin on their screen. It's like he had a parachute. Just that's how slow he was. He was just nowhere to be found. Had no speed. Nothing. I don't know what happened. I'm sure Denny will explain it on Action Sentimental either tomorrow or on Tuesday about what exactly happened. Because that 11 car was so off. It was shocking to see. Um, surprising to see Kyle Larson. Because Larson, up until his crash, was doing pretty good. Was making some nice moves. Was settled in third place at the time of the crash. So I thought maybe, oh, this could be the opportunity we see Larson get a good finish on a super speedway. Or a track like Atlanta. Because I don't think he's finished better than 30th since the reconfiguration. Um, but to have that crash, I mean, he's lucky he's had the amount of wins that he's had. Because to still be plus 15 after finishing second to dead last... I mean, that goes to show you how good that five car was in the regular season to rack up that many playoff points. Um, Other drivers, you know, like Ty Gibbs, really, really nice to see. It was surprised to see him run as well as he did. Was major factor. Had a really good shot at winning, but, you know, got caught up, you know, in in the shuffle. Got sent to mid-pack. Nearly got caught up in that crash. Was able to avoid it. But all that just to be just now one point above the cut line. Um, Martin Trick Jr. Wrong place at the wrong time. When he got hit by Ryan Blaney. I mean, seems as though that, oh, he's safe, he's fine. And then here comes Blaney and bam, just sideswiping. Blaney was able to get away scot-free, finish second, have a 45-point gap. Well, Truex is now minus 19. And I don't want to say um, he's in a must-win situation, but I think when you look at this 19 team in recent weeks, I don't know. I feel like you have to start saying, okay, it's time to go. I mean, you Truex has to bring it. He, he He's run well on the road courses, so he can run well at Watkins Glen, but he has to bring his A game. Be up front. Earn stage points. and Because when you look at the drivers he's competing against, he should beat them, but I had him out in the round of 16. Some people didn't agree with that. So far, I'm just saying, I know it's only one race in, but I predicted Logano to win. And I had Truex out in the round of 16. And right now, he is below the cut line. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, I'll also just to point out, good points day for Austin Sindrick. Because I had him out in the round of 16. But he's plus 27. Interesting to see how he fares next weekend at Watkins Glen. Because he is good on the road courses. Um, but, so yeah, some surprising drivers on how well they ran. Surprise playoff drivers on either bad luck or how poor they ran. But, Otherwise, it was a very entertaining race, and I'm excited to see what Watkins Glen br- uh, brings because it's going to throw a whole other wrench into the playoff grid, and I'm excited to see that. But that is it for this episode of MDK Racing Victory Stop. Let me know what you thought of the race in the comment section down below. Did you like it? Did you not? And as always, until next time, my name is Jet from MDK. Thanks for watching. <laughs>